In 1959, with one sentence, Pope John XXIII changed the face of the Church forever. There should be a general council. What do we know about this man and his motives? In 1881, he was born as Angelo Roncalli in a northern Italian mountain village. He was the first son of working-class farmers. It was a warm family with 13 children, which cultivated spiritual practices of prayer, devotion, hard work, and caring for others. When Angelo was 23, he was ordained a priest in Rome. During his studies, he concentrated on church history. He learned how the content of faith has been expressed differently in each era. Was this the basis for his desire for a more contemporary language of faith? After the First World War, he began his career as ambassador to the Holy See, first in Bulgaria and later in Istanbul and Greece. There his eyes were opened toward the Orthodox churches as well as the Islamic faith. During World War II, he used his diplomatic status to help Greek Jews escape the Nazis. These actions permanently defined his attitude toward the Jewish people. After the war, he was appointed in Paris, where he became acquainted with the Nouvelle Theologie. He used his diplomatic skills well in delicate cases, especially during and immediately after the Second World War. In 1953, Roncalli became Cardinal and Patriarch of Venice. He was 72 and looking forward to a peaceful old age. He was looking forward to that peaceful old age until that eventful day in October 1958. Up to this point, it had been difficult to find a successor for Pope Pius XII. After four days and eleven votes, it was a complete surprise that Cardinal Roncalli was chosen as the Pope. Many thought he would simply be a transitional Pope. Nothing less would prove true. The first thing to notice was the new style which Pope John XXIII brought to the Vatican. He brought humor, accessibility, and commitment to both the faithful and the world. In contrast to some predecessors, he wished to encourage openness to the wider world. In 1962, with the Cuban Missile Crisis leading the world to the brink of a nuclear war, John XXIII contributed to a peaceful solution by diplomatic interventions as well as a radio broadcast. The Soviet newspaper Pravda published the entire speech. Time magazine awarded him the Man of the Year. Such esteem by the powers of the world was unprecedented. Barely three months after his papal election, he made an announcement that left a small group of cardinals speechless. He said that there should be a general council, the primary focus of which would be aggiornamento, bringing the church up to date. It would also reach out to other Christians in the cause of unity and encourage dialogue with the wider world. His influence at the council was noticed by many, as bishop among bishops, not so much intervening from above, but rather encouraging great confidence in the working of the Spirit. Sadly, Pope John XXIII did not live long enough to experience the conciliary event as a whole. He died six months after the first session began. The world mourned this loss. Committed to advancing world peace, justice, and dialogue with a special fervor in his final months, St. John XXIII earned the admiration of those from other churches, of other faiths, and many of no particular faith alike. History has judged him a truly extraordinary pope, with a vision for the church and the world that continues to inspire dialogue today.